And welcome to The Lead. I'm Jay Tapper. We begin with breaking news in the politics lead today. Moments ago, President Joe Biden pitched his $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill in a roundtable at the White House. Right now, the U.S. Senate is considering the major economic package, which could put more money in your pocket. But first, hours or even days of Republican delay tactics are expected in the Senate. Right now, the Senate is at something of a standstill because of a debate over unemployment benefits. Once senators reach that final vote, Democrats have no room for error with a 50-50 partisan split in the chamber. This afternoon, President Biden also said the new jobs report out proves the bill is urgently needed. Though the U.S. added far more jobs than economists expected, 379,000 jobs last month. As CNN's Phil Mattingly reports, President Biden says his plan is essentially to turn the economy back around because that is not enough jobs needed. We can't afford one step forward and two steps backwards. President Joe Biden trying to maximize the urgency of his $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan. The rescue plan is absolutely essential for turning this around, getting kids back to school safely, getting a lifeline in small business, and getting the upper hand on COVID-19. Even as the U.S. economy starts to bounce back. A hiring surge in February with 379,000 jobs added and the unemployment rate ticking down to 6.2 percent. But with the U.S. still down 9.5 million jobs from one year ago, the White House is urging action and fast. Congress must pass the American Rescue Plan now so we can get Americans back to work. And the Democrat-led Senate on the verge of delivering striking a deal on enhanced weekly unemployment benefits, dropping it to $300 from $400 in exchange for extending them through September, and crucially, making the first $10,200 of unemployment benefits not subject to taxes. I'm convinced we are ready to get this done. In all, the bill largely staying in line with what Biden proposed before he even took office, with $1,400 stimulus checks, $170 billion for education, $160 billion for vaccines and testing, and crucial extensions of emergency unemployment programs. But still days away from Senate passage, with the chamber now engaged in a marathon consideration of amendments. And if we can't respond to the pain of working families today, we don't deserve to be here. So, including a last-ditch effort from Senator Bernie Sanders to get the $15 minimum wage back into the proposal, which failed on a bipartisan basis with eight Democratic votes against and dozens upon dozens of Republican amendments planned, most designed to try and split Democrats from the bill. This isn't a pandemic rescue package. It's a parade of left-wing pet projects that are ramming through. They're ramming through during a pandemic something the White House and Senate Democratic leaders are trying desperately to require. keep from happening. The Senate's going to take a lot of votes, but we are going to power through and finish this bill however long it takes. And, Jake, that desperation from the White House and Senate Democratic leaders is zeroing in on one senator, Senator Joe Manchin, the West Virginia Democrat. He has not signed off on that deal uh, in terms of those federal expanded unemployment benefits up to this point. And right now, sources say, or sources are telling our colleague Manu Raju, that he's leaning towards a Republican proposal related to that $300 enhancement. How this all ends is still very much up for debate, but the reality is this. Democrats cannot pass this bill without Senator Joe Manchin. So right now, a lot of closed-door meetings meetings, a lot of effort from the White House and on Capitol Hill to try and bring Joe Manchin along, Jake. Joe Manchin, one of the most powerful people in Washington, D.C. right now. Phil Mattingly, thanks so much. Let's discuss with my panel. Uh, Abby, let me start with you. Today, the White House said that President Biden will fight to pass this $15 federal minimum wage increase. But as Phil just noted, seven Democrats and independent Angus King, who caucuses with the Democrats, they voted against adding this to the relief bill. Uh, Senator Kirsten Sinema explained her no vote by saying there should be consideration of the raise, but separate from the relief bill. What do you take from all this? Well, I think it's pretty clear uh, that the Biden administration doesn't want this bill held up because of the minimum wage. Um, maybe the only, uh, if, you, if you looked at one signal of that, you would look at Senator Chris Coons's vote against this amendment. Chris Coons is a uh, very close ally of uh, this administration's, and I think it's very, very symbolic that 
this is not the venue that they want to deal with this issue. Now, how they do that going forward, I think, is another subject. There's a lot of reason to believe that Democrats, moderate Democrats, and even some Republicans are open to a lower threshold. And maybe I think that is where you will see the Biden administration putting their, uh, you know, elbow grease behind an effort to get the minimum wage at, at the very least increased for the first time in, uh, in quite a long time. Tara Palmieri, today, Republican Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin said that the Republican Party had 100 amendments in the hopper uh, to keep delaying final passage uh, of this vote. What do Republicans have to gain by doing that? I mean, it's going to be a very long weekend. The thing that they gain is basically slowing down the passage of this bill and pointing out all of the amendments within the package that they disagree with. Um, you know, it's also they, they claim that there are a lot of um, Democrat wish list items in this package and they want to draw attention to it. And overall, they just want to slow down the process. Senator Johnson uh, had the parliamentarian read the 691 page uh, bill the other day. And I think their whole point is that this package is so big that it's and, and, and the big is actually the money as well. They think that one point nine trillion is too much. So. By showing the extent of the package, all the things that are packed in it, they are arguing to their voters that this is not the right bill for COVID relief. But Abby, a Monmouth poll shows 62% of the American people support the $1.9 trillion stimulus plan. Uh, you know, the White House says it's a bipartisan bill, not because of the votes it's getting, which is not bipartisan, but because of the support it enjoys from Democrats, Republicans, and independents, according to polls. Is there a risk for Republicans that they will alienate Americans who need help and don't really care about the size of the package? Yeah, I mean, I think that that is definitely a risk. You know, Americans want money in their pockets. They want to pay their bills. They want to be able to go to the grocery store and buy groceries for their families. But what is striking to me about that those numbers, both the 64 and the 34, look at where, where it is. It, it's almost um, exactly where we have been for about four years now in terms of uh, the approval rating of a certain former president, Trump. There's a segment of this country that uh, wants absolutely nothing to do with this. And when you look at Republicans in the Senate and in the House, uh, their base are those people, though that third of the country. And that is who they are listening to. And that's why you're not seeing the, even these really extraordinary majorities in supporting the bill changing their behavior on Capitol Hill. Uh, they are focused on the narrowest parts of their base, the people who are showing up for them in midterm elections. And that's the, the number one priority for them right at this moment. And Tara, this afternoon, uh, as Phil just reported, it's not clear where West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin is going to land uh, when it comes to this Democratic proposal to extend unemployment insurance benefits at $300 a week uh, through September uh, instead of $400 a week through August. How messy could this get? Mm -hmm. I mean, they need that vote. Right. And, you know, uh, Manchin has essentially become king of the Senate because there's such a small uh, majority. It's basically 50 50 with Kamala Harris breaking the tie. And so, you know, the White House crossed Joe Manchin pretty early on when Kamala Harris did an interview with a West Virginia news outlet and sort of stepped into his turf, put pressure on him to vote along with the White House. And it seems like he's still held on to that and is willing to exert exert his power right now. I mean, he's a moderate Democrat, but he was a, he voted with Republicans many, many times during the Trump administration. He was seen as a reliable vote for Republicans. And maybe, you know, Biden, who is passing this massive bill through reconciliation, should have perhaps uh, spent a little bit more time trying to win over moderate Democrats and moderate Republicans. And, you know, I know that that obviously the deadline is pressing March 15th unemployment benefits run out. But a lot of these Republicans feel burned because they tried to meet with uh, President Biden, and they showed up asking for $600 billion. Obviously, he, he wanted $1.9 trillion, but they thought, hey, maybe we can meet in the middle. But it turns out that they said, let's just ram it through with reconciliation. So I think what you're seeing is a lot of power plays right now and uh, exerting, you know, showing that they have, that the, the, the White House can't ram this through. Yeah, and Manchin is the one that essentially sank uh, the cabinet nominee near a Tandon for Office of Management and Budget right. Director. Uh, Abby, quick if you could, White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain today tweeted about the February jobs report saying, quote, if you think today's jobs report is good enough, then know that at this pace it would take until April 2023 to get back to where we were in February 
2020, a year ago, the Biden administration doesn't want anyone to think, oh, this jobs report is good enough. Yeah, not only that, but this is, um, they are afraid of a deja vu. What happened in 2009 when they passed a bill that they, in retrospect, believed was too small was that the, uh, the recovery was protracted. It took a very long time to get to a point where uh, Donald Trump could then claim <laughs> claim that he deserved credit for the economy rebounding. So the Biden administration, they don't want to do that again. They want to get uh, back to uh, fast growth as quickly as possible so that they don't get blamed in two or in four years for the recovery not being fast enough. Uh, th that's what you're seeing in that Ron Klain tweet. Never mind that they, uh, they want people to recognize that this is urgent and they want to do it right now. Tara Palmieri, one of the authors of Political Playbook, thanks for joining us. And you can catch Abby Phillip on CNN's. Yeah.